Hey guys, I'm Casey from Teaching On Less, and come on in for the real thing. I am kicking up this YouTube channel again because I have so much more time, and I want to share with you guys some of the things that I've learned, you know, over the last 10 years in my teaching career, from when I was in college to where I am now and what I feel like the perfect classroom is. I think that's something that we always are looking to achieve is, you know, what can we do to have the perfect classroom? And today I want to kind of go over some of the things that I would suggest. So so this is my office welcome to my office and I am really gonna try to do YouTube videos every single Friday so if you want to hit that subscribe button make sure to check back and figure out all things educational so let's get right into the content of this video which is the perfect classroom If you would like to follow along, I've made you guys some notes because I'm super fancy like that. And it's in the Google Drive document. You can click down below. When you click on it though, it's view only. So what you need to do is hit file and then make a copy and you can manipulate the, no manipulate the notes as much as you want. I've given you guys just some information, quick information, and then I've asked you guys some questions. So I want you guys to follow along digitally if you're interested. All right, let's chat real quick about what is the perfect classroom? Now, in order to achieve what you are looking to achieve as a teacher, I need for you to answer that question. So what do you think will make you feel like you have the perfect classroom? Is it the way your classroom looks? Is it the way your children feel? Is it the way that you feel? There are so many different elements and I don't think you can narrow it down to just one, but I'm curious on how you would describe your perfect classroom. So before you can take everything that I'm trying to teach you today, you need to answer that question for yourself. I don't care if you're a brand new teacher, if you're in school because you want to be a teacher, if you've been teaching for five years and it's not going as you planned, or let's say you've been teaching for 30 and you're ready to reinvent yourself, it's important that you figure out the end game, like what you want at the end of the year, how you want everyone to feel. So that's question number one in order for us to get started on this journey. The next question is, what is my definition of the perfect classroom? Well, that is not something I can put into words. It's like asking me what my favorite song is. I can't tell you what my favorite song is. I just have to give you a whole bunch of information. So that's what, I have to give you like tons of different artists and tons of different songs. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing with you guys with this. I'm gonna give you tons of tips and tricks. Some of them were funny because I really feel like what I learned in college is super outdated. And if you're in college now and you're reading these books and they're telling you on how you should perfect the best classroom management strategy and all this shenanigans, I think that you're gonna find out that none of that is gonna be things you can actually take with you until you are in the trenches and you understand. So some of the approaches that I'm gonna give you, please don't take them offensively. I'm I'm a realist and I just feel like this is real. Like this is, this is life in the classroom. So the first thing I wanna chat with you guys about in order to perfect the classroom is classroom management. That to me is number one on my list of things you need to do. Now there are four types of teachers in this world, in my eyes. There are four different types of teachers in this world. Are you ready? I'm gonna give you lots of acronyms. I was an English teacher, so acronyms are my jam, okay? The first one is the STHU teacher, the shut the heck up teacher. All they want you to do is to tell other kids to be quiet. So I'm teaching a lesson, let's pretend that I'm an STHU teacher, shut the heck up and Colby is in the corner and he's talking and I'm going over the lesson and I'm like, excuse me, Colby, could you be quiet? I'm trying to teach. Excuse me, Colby, I'm gonna need you to shut up. And you would be amazed because they tell you don't say things like shut up to your students, but you would be amazed at how many people tell their students to shut up. It is, oh, it is disturbing, it is disturbing. They can't get anything done because all they care about is their classroom being super quiet. I don't care if you're a kindergarten or if you're a 12th grade teacher, they can't deal with a little bit of noise. Everything is just shut the heck up. So that's teacher number one. That's a classroom management strategy is quietness. Teacher number one. Teacher number two classroom management strategy is IDGAC. I don't give a crap. I don't give a crap about noise. It's gonna be a zoo in here. It's gonna be an absolute zoo. When people walk in, they're gonna wonder if they're you know in the Hunger Games because kids are gonna be hanging from the ceiling tiles and it's just going to be so loud and when the people walk in they're like oh wow you know this teacher must be super laid back because everybody's going crazy no she's not or he's not she just doesn't give a crap she has passed the point of caring and she has learned how to 
completely block out all of the foolishness. And that was not me. Like, no, 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 no. I didn't need everybody to be quiet all the time, but I also could not stand for it to be an absolute zoo in my classroom. Because let me tell you something. Once your students figure out that you don't give a crap, eventually they're going to turn into the students that don't give a crap either. All right, teacher number three is, you ready for this one? A-M-O-S-C approach. Now, this is more relevant for 4 through 12, okay? A-M-O-S-C. Add me on Snapchat. You're that kind of teacher. Oh, okay, yeah, honey, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah. Oh, like we're besties. Yes, I know that is the cutest outfit. I know, I love those shoes. Where did you get them from? Or I'm not saying that teachers say add me on Snapchat. They don't. I'm just saying this is t the type of personality that I have run into, especially with middle school teachers, especially with high school teachers. They're not interested in being a teacher as much as they're interested in the likability factor. They want students to like them. They want students to have their buy-in. And this is relevant from kindergarten until 12th grade. I see it in parents all the time. Instead of being a disciplinarian, they're more worried about being besties. So the first one was S-T-H-U, the shut the heck up teacher. The second one was I don't give a crap. And then the third one was the add me on Snapchat teacher. Now let me tell you the teacher that I am. The teacher that I was, the teacher that I want you to be. I don't need I don't need any of those other things. You need to be a savage. Yes, a savage. That is a 2018 word, and that is relevant to how we teach in our classroom. You need to learn how to be a savage in the classroom. You need to rock that classroom management. Now, what do I mean by being a savage? Well, they told me in college not to be sassy. Are you kidding me? Sassy is my middle name. I remember I got marks on my paper, and they told me, you do not need to, what did they, how did they put it? It, was, it wasn't sassy. They said, um, oh, sarcastic. You cannot be sarcastic with children. What? Yeah, yes, you can. Kids are sarcastic. Kids need quick wittedness. They need we we learned about something called withitness. Now, but withitness was not being sarcastic. But in my mind, I was thinking withitness is totally being sarcastic. So I was a savage in the classroom, and I was a savage for good. I was an advocate for good and love and kindness. But I also was a disciplinarian that put them in check the second that they got out of line. I monitored my classroom every single step of the way. Every second of every day was planned. There was not one moment where there was downtime. I'm not saying that we didn't have bad days, but I'm saying that I had it on lock. My students even got to the point where they're like, Miss Morris is a savage. Like, I taught middle school for the majority of my career, but I also taught kindergarten and I also taught first grade. And you can be a savage in kindergarten and first grade. If you are doing small group, if you're doing reading time, and a student comes up to you and says, Oh, Miss Morris, I'm bleeding. You need to have that on lock. You need to have your classroom management strategy on your A game. And students know that is not even a question during flexible grouping because my job is to teach each and every one of you. I cannot, unless you are bleeding profusely and there's not something a band can stop. I don't need to know it. Be a savage. And that's not a bad thing. You're loving them and you're teaching them, but you're also letting them know your boundaries. Don't be their friend. They don't need another friend. They need a role model. They need somebody that loves them, that believes in them, and that can tell them they're going to make it. So that's my number one tip for perfecting a classroom is get your classroom management on point and be a savage. All right, the next one is ambiance. Oh my goodness, ambiance in a classroom makes my heart happy. I can walk into a classroom and I can tell you if things are going the way that they should be going because of the way that classroom looks, the way it smells, and the way it feels. Now, all of those things are super important, but I want you guys to really focus on what your end game is. What do you want from your students when they walk in? For me, I wanted them to feel like home. This is our place of nurture and love and refuge. When you walk in here, I don't care what you had going on at your house. I don't care if you were yelling and you were screaming. I don't care what went on. I want you to come in those in, into my door and know that you are loved and this is a place that we call home. How did I go about doing that? Well, a big thing for me was always lighting. There, were, there was not one time in my classroom when my classroom lights were on, unless it was state testing. That's a shame, isn't it? That is a shame. So some of you may think, don't jump to any conclusions yet, hear me out. 
I also taught children, special needs children. I had, a, I had an inclusion class. So I understand that some students may not do well with different lighting situations. Um, some of my autistic students needed a little bit more lighting than say some of my other students. So I had a section for them in my classroom where the lighting was a lot more vibrant and they didn't feel like they weren't getting enough light within the classroom. So if you feel like a differentiation strategy with lighting might not work for you because you're in self-contained or something like that, then I encourage you to try it out. Try different things and talk to your students. Figure out what they feel best in. My students despised if someone walked in and accidentally flipped the lights on. They were all like, oh! So lighting is important to me, and I went and bought cheap lighting all over the place, from Walmart to Target to Goodwill, and when they walked in, there were probably about 20 different versions of lamps, and it was important for me for them to feel like when they walked in that they were home. Another way that I encourage you to set an ambiance in your classroom is with essential oils. Now, I used to do plug-ins, and then I realized that some of my students have allergies, and some of them are asthmatic, so it was hard for me to keep a plug-in in, and although it smelled good, it wasn't really the answer for me. So when I found essential oils, I realized that this is going to work for my students. I felt like my room was cleaner. Now, essential oils, there are so many different variations, and I am not a Young Living Specialist, so I'm not trying to sell you anything, but one that I found on Amazon was called Kid Safe, and it was a brand that was made specifically for children, and it was safe for all kids. Now, if I were you, I would ask their parents, maybe on open house, if that is something that would be okay with them, just so you have all of your bases covered. So essential oils are a good way when people walk in, you can set the mood with essential oils. You can set the tone. If you want things to be bright and cheerful and vibrant, use orange or lemon or peppermint. Have everything just smelling so clean and so fresh. Let's say that your students are cray because it's a full moon and you need them to chill out. Put some lavender in and have the students get that calming effect of essential oils. I think most of you probably already know about it, but if not, go on with your bad self and go check it out on Google. Just FYI, I am a hippie at heart, so I believe in any homeopathic remedy that there is on the planet. So if you're not like that, then maybe I'm sorry. Okay, the next one is curtains. Remember, we're going for that homey vibe. We want things to feel like when they walk in that they are loved and they are nurtured. So I went and bought some curtains from a local Lowe's. I measured them and just got those rods that when you twist, I mean, I didn't get any fancy curtains, um, fancy curtain hangers. I just got the rods that are retractable that you twist and had the curtains that way and my kids love them i took them down to clean them wash them one day and they walked in and they were like miss morris this will not do why why does the window look like that so curtains are important they make you feel at home the next one is a rug now rugs especially teaching rugs can be absolutely ridiculous like who wants to pay three thousand dollars for a kindergarten classroom rug ain't nobody got time for that on a teacher budget you feel me so what i suggest is going somewhere like Goodwill or a discount store where you can find rugs for cheap. All right, and then the last thing that I wanted to add for ambiance would be student work. It's important that when students come into their house, which is how I refer to my classroom, that they feel like they are home. And when you feel like you're home, your home belongs with your stuff. So make sure you have your students work. Maybe a lot of my students were so sweet and would write me letters. They would give me pictures and I would laminate them with a scotch laminator. I'll put the link down below if you're interested. A scotch laminator, super easy, super cheap, and then put them on the wall. It's important that they feel like they are home. All right, the next thing and the most important thing that I believe is essential to the perfect classroom is love. And I don't care what grade you teach, you must love your students. And I'm not talking about that fake love. I'm talking about that real love, that bringing in for the real thing. They know the difference. Students know when you love them. Um, I say this and I'm very hesitant about saying this. I don't know why, but as teachers, we're always hush-hush about the money that we make, about the way that our students perform, about how well good we are. But in every other profession, people shout it from the rooftops. If people are making a killing doing selling online books, they're gonna tell you they're making a killing. If they are really jam up at being a makeup artist on YouTube, they're gonna tell you. So you know what? I'm gonna let go of all that and I'm just gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what I was good at as a teacher. And I was good at loving my students and it showed year after year I was the best 
teacher when it came to test scores. Now, I don't know if it come if it's like, are you into like how your students perform? Because I wasn't. It's never been about the test to me, but year after year, every single year that I taught, my students perform better than anybody else on their test. Now, I'm not saying that's because I'm a great teacher. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I love the heck out of those students. And students that you love will outperform students that you that you don't every single time. I am not the best teacher, but I am really good at establishing relationships with my students. And even if I didn't give them all of the information that they needed to succeed on the test, they wanted it. They wanted it so bad and they wanted it for themselves and they wanted it for me. And I cannot express that enough. You don't have to be the best of the best, but if you will love the heck out of them, it will work out time and time again. Love comes in so many different forms. There is love love and then there's tough love. And my students knew when I was being a savage what tough love was. Tough love is when you correct them when they do things that are wrong, and that is okay. It, you don't have to be 100%, hi guys, let's come in. No, don't do that, Johnny. Make sure they know their limits, they know their expectations, and they know that you do everything you do out of love. If I got onto them, if I had to correct them, I always ended it with, thank you, I love you every single time and my students to this day will see me and they'll be like i love you miss morris because we did we do we love each other so that's my little tip on the perfect classroom with filling it with love all right the next one i want to chat with you guys about is language what language do your students teach and, excuse me what language do your students talk and i'm not talking about are they do they speak english or spanish i'm talking about what is their language how do they talk to their friends how do they talk to the people that hey guys the camera angle may look a little bit different i may look a little bit different i've been rushing around i had to run to my husband's school real quick so if it is just bear with me i know i'm like zoomed in hold on but you know that's real talk just real life <clears throat> i think we were talking about student language you know, figure out what language your students speak. And I don't mean do they speak English, do they speak Spanish, but get to know your students. Get to know the, the culture that they come from. Get to know where they were raised, how they were raised. And I really encourage you to let that be one of the main driving forces in your relationship with your students. Familiarize yourself with your culture, read books if you need to, ask questions, and find out their student language and speak it. Speak it as much as you can, as often as you can, to really gain that powerful trust from your students. The next thing I wanna chat about with The Perfect Classroom is organization. Now, organization is a key component in my life, and I hope it is yours too. And if it's not, then you need to get on your organization A game and change your life. All the things I'm gonna be chatting about with you in today's video can be found in the link, Amazon link, affiliate link down below. I'm also going to be giving you guys some promo codes if you're interested. They're only available for the month of April 2018, but if they're not, if it's not April 2018, don't worry, they'll still be available in my Amazon link. So the first thing I want to chat about that has changed my life is this super cute organizational box from Really Useful Boxes. And I put all of my math game pieces and different stuff in here, but first of all, this is just so darn cute. You could put a paper clips, you could do staples, there are so many different options. It's very versatile. So that's my really useful boxes. Another company that I am in love with is Iris. Now, Iris containers have changed the game for me. There are so many different versions of Iris containers that you can get on the market today. And the ones that I'm going to be showing to you guys are available in this amazing teacher pack that you can bundle them together and you can save. You can use my code, which is teacher OM. It's all capital letters. It's all together. I'll put it right down here at the bottom of the screen and you get all of this stuff for super cheap. So let me tell you, Iris, You. Forgot to bring it all over here. Iris, I love you. I had to go get it. I forgot to bring it all over here. So here is an example of one of the things that's going to come in this little teacher kit. And it's a container. It has six little compartments right here. They also have it available in colors, um, not in the teacher pack, but it's a wonderful way to store any small manipulative that you want. Here is an example of one of my beginning sound games. And it has a little penguin on there. And 
then the letter P and students will match the beginning sound to the picture. Now I store all of these in one of these small little containers and like I said there are six here. So if you're working flex groups you can go ahead and have all of your groups prepared and differentiated right there in front of you. And if you're like super awesome you could do it for the entire year and you could just have these stored in your teacher closet. So this is one of the things that's included with their teacher with their teacher gift set thing. I don't know what you call it, okay? All right, the next thing is this really large, it looks like a scrapbook container. It's where I house all of my math stuff. So I've got math lesson plans, manipulatives, I've got teacher helper cards in here. It's a 14 and a half by 14 and a half, and it is really, can be used for anything. This is a clear version that's included in the teacher pack, but I also, train's coming by. Welcome to the South. Roll it. Um, I also have another version in a teal color that matches my brand and all of my sight word games I house in here. So for May, I have May sight word games if you're interested. They're completely editable. But all of these, these are also iris containers and colors, but they're not included in the teacher pack. But I use all of these on a daily basis, a daily basis. And colors, I mean, I just love things that are in color. Colors make my life better. So organization can really change the game for you in your classroom to make your classroom just be as fluid as you can, like as smooth as it can be. All right, seating. Now, flexible seating is a really, really big hot word, words right now. If you want to be that teacher, go on with your bad self. I have lived and breathed flexible seating and it did not work for me. And I was, I really had a hard time admitting that for a while because all of the cool kids were doing it but I tried it. I searched high and low for an entire summer. I probably spent $500 of my own money trying to change my classroom to make it better for flexible seating. We had like two or three desks and then we had couches. I had recliners. I had uh, rugs. I had um, pull out. Um, I had a standing table. I had like literally anything you can think of when you see the flexible seating classroom and it just did not work for me. It may work for you and if it does and that's your idea of a perfect classroom, that's awesome. I know some of the best teachers out there that use flexible seating and they own it. But for me, it wasn't my personality. It was so hard for me to be teaching. My students were so comfortable that I felt like I was losing classroom management skills because they were taking more ownership for my class than I was taking. So flexible seating did not work for me. It might work for you, but if it's something you're interested in, plan out exactly what you want and where you want it. If it's not, if it's just desk that you're interested in, which is what I was just interested in, think about how you want those desks arranged. For me, the ideal class setup is in a U shape, is completely in a U, and I feel like I can stand in the middle and I can talk to everybody and we can, I just feel like everybody's in arm's reach and we're all one big happy family when everyone is out here like this. That's just my own personal perfect classroom setup. The next thing that you need to master in order to have the perfect classroom is something I learned from a dear friend of mine, Britt from The Superhero Teacher. If you've never heard of her, then I don't, I don't know where you've been for the last five years. She's absolutely amazing, inside and out. I finally got to meet her at a teacher conference for Teacher Heart Out. If you're interested, I'll leave the link down below as well. And she is a breath of fresh air. She taught me all about color psychology. And if you are a marketing person, you will already know this, but here is an example of what color psychology can do. And what it does is you want, to, you want your children just like with essential oils, you want to evoke certain emotions with them. And color psychology can do that for you. So whether you decorate your classroom with reds, pinks, purples, navy, green, blue, orange, doesn't matter. But every single one of those colors evokes a certain emotion in us. Personally, when I see yellow, I get happy. Yellow makes me happy because yellow is a vibrant, happy color for me. There are some colors like red that can instill, you know, passionate, active, exciting energy and all that kind of stuff. Um, do you want to have warmth in your classroom? Orange was a really big thing for me when I was teaching. So think about color psychology, do a quick Google search and you can find this. Um, this was on Google Images and I use it a lot in some of my email courses. So it's just, it's great. So check out color psychology. 
The next thing I want to share with you guys is a free resource on how to decorate your teacher desk. It's fun to have a teacher desk and make it your own and make it home. So I'm going to put a free link down below on how you can have your own teacher desk organizer, your own teacher desk banners for free. So that was the next thing. The last thing I wanted to chat about is making sure that you have a pencil sharpener that is awesome. And I have that linked down below as well. Having a pencil sharpener that is dependable is important because you need to be able to go, go, go. And when you need something to work, you need it to work right then. I finally found, finally, after 10 years, found a pencil sharpener, that was it for me. We have a very distinct time in my classroom when they can sharpen their pencils. When the pencil sharpener is open, they can go sharpen their pencils. When it's closed, and it's closed about 90% of the time, they are not allowed to go sharpen their pencils. I want my students to take ownership and use that as a time to know when they need to sharpen their pencils and it because I was sharpening them and then it became a chore to me and they need to know that this is their classroom too just like their home and they need to make up their bed when they're at home they need to sharpen their own pencils this is what I think the perfect classroom entails you may have a totally different definition but my job here on this YouTube channel is to help you guys understand how I feel as an educator and how I want to help educators. So I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I know this video is a little bit lengthier than most of my videos, and I apologize for that, but I'm going to be uploading videos every Friday, so be sure to subscribe and check back every week. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section down below. And as always, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. All right, it was so good to have you, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!